Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2022-23 season. My name is Dan and today it is time to do my Game Week 22 team selection video where we are going to set ourselves up for the big double Game Week, guys. If you do enjoy this video, please do leave a like. Please do subscribe. But before we do anything else, let's have a look at our Game Week 21 scores. Okay, guys, so game week 21 was a green arrow, so we're still continuing the flawless streak of green arrows since the World Cup break, but it was a little bit smaller this week. This has been my smallest green arrow since that World Cup break, uh, but it's still a green arrow th nonetheless, so we're still pretty happy. We're going up, we're moving in the right direction, but it was one of those game weeks, really, it seemed like. Aside from Portland, who obviously got a huge score, everyone has him already, everyone captains him, you know, everyone does the same thing there. Uh, but aside from that, the big scoring players really were quite random. We saw, saw the likes of Bowen and Kurt Zuma, Anthony at Bournemouth, Emerson Royale at Spurs. Some really low ownership random players did get uh, all seemingly most of the points last game week. So it was a little bit of a difficult one, a little bit of a random one. But still, we survived it with a green arrow. We did reasonably well and we, we have a team that is... I think reasonably well set up for the for the next game because I did roll my transfer in game week 21 as well. So that, that is going to be an important factor, I think. Uh, but overall, a couple of disappointments. Uh, Nathan Ake uh, not uh, getting the points there. Dunk, uh, disappointed to lose to clean sheets. Uh, Martinelli and Almiron continuing to fail. I think Tony was probably the biggest disappointment of them all because I thought he would do so well against Leeds, but it just didn't happen for him in that game at all. Uh, but yeah. One of those game weeks where it's like, it's a small positive, but you hoped it would be better. But we've got a big double next. So hopefully there's going to be some points on the board, uh, particularly if we are playing a certain one of our chips. Okay, guys, so 0.9 million in the bank, two free transfers for game week 22. We are going to do a madness. Let me show you what I am thinking. So, Kepa in goal straight away. He has been a bit of a legend, really, hasn't he, since the break? A goalkeeper extraordinaire. I can't believe, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, I was getting pelters in the comments saying, oh, people saying, oh, why are, you, why are you going for Kepa? Why are you going for Kepa? He's a terrible goalkeeper. Well, look at the points that he's been getting recently. It's really quite mad, isn't it? And he's got some more nice fixtures. Chelsea defensively, they're Numbers are looking pretty good. Kepa is making a lot of saves as well, which is really important for him picking up bonus points. Chelsea are not scoring too many goals as well, which means that those bonus points are typically going to defensive players, particularly Kepa if he's making those saves as well. So he's still going to hopefully be in the points in these nice, easy fixtures. Fulham, West Ham, Southampton... I like this a lot. I still think that he's one of the best goalkeepers to have right now in the game. Maybe you could say Edison is slightly better just because of those uh, uh, Man City double game weeks. But Edison plays against Spurs this week. So Kepa really very happy to own him going into game week 22. Into defence, we have got Kieran Trippier. West Ham is the fixture at home. We did see West Ham finally concede a goal in the League Cup semi-final versus Southampton. Uh, but I do think they are going to continue their run of Premier League clean sheets. That's for sure. West Ham at home is a very nice fixture for Trippier and for Newcastle and we expect the same thing as usual with Trippier you know all he has to do is get a clean sheet it doesn't matter if he doesn't get any return attacking returns it doesn't matter if he gets a yellow card he is still going to be on bonus points because that's what he does so another eight pointer nine pointer for Kieran Trippier I would not be surprised uh, if we can get an attacking return it would be nice but another one of those players that everyone has anyway so he's not going to be a key difference maker in my team uh, someone who might be a bit of a difference maker is Luke Shaw I know most people are kind of getting on the Luke Shaw train by this point, but there are still a few people who haven't got him yet. Uh, Crystal Palace and Leeds for the double game week, so he is our first double game week player for uh, for this particular game week, for this particular team. So, uh, yeah, Crystal Palace and Leeds, two home easy fixtures against two of the teams that are kind of creating the least amount of chances since the break. They're not uh, creating very many chances at all. So, uh, we're not really expecting too many goals from Crystal Palace or Leeds. In fact, Man United in each of these games sort of have like a 40-45% chance of keeping a clean sheet in each of these games, particularly against Crystal Palace, who really are one of the weakest attacks in the entire league, possibly even the weakest attack in the entire league. You've maybe put them aside Bournemouth in that regard uh, but yeah Luke Shaw he's good for bonus points as well he gets forward he does attack he does uh, create chances for his teammates he does take the occasional shot on as well we've seen him get goals in you know weeks gone by so maybe we can get a little bit more of that maybe we can get a mega score from him I wouldn't be totally surprised if Shaw was one of the highest scoring players of the game week you can definitely see it being him can't you uh, Lewis Dunk up next Bournemouth at home so I was saying about the easiest fixtures if you're a defender Bournemouth is definitely one of those fixtures and although I'm not 
really totally convinced about Brighton defensively. They're not what they're not my favourite defence in the league. I, I have to admit to you guys. Um, but I did have uh, well, I ended up picking Dunk for my kind of World Cup unlimited transfers team. Not really had too much use for him, but. I think I'm going to give him a go at Bournemouth at home. Like, if I'm not going to play him against Bournemouth at home, when am I going to play him? And one extra bonus bit of information, Dunk actually uh, scored in the Cup just a few days ago. So I'm wondering, can Lewis Dunk score in the Premier League as well? Or has he used up his yearly goal allowance? I don't know. I'm hoping for some attacking returns, though. That would be really, really nice. And I uh, hope for a clean sheet as well. You've got to be in it to win it. So let's see what happens. Uh, into midfield, we've got a De Bruyne playing against Spurs. I don't actually think this is as difficult of a fixture as a lot of people are making it out to be, particularly if we're talking about uh, for attackers, because Spurs do concede a lot of chances. De Bruyne is a decent big player game. You know, he does well in, the, in these in a, a big player game. Big, big game player. <laughs> that makes more sense. Big game player. We, you could call him a big player game if you want to. Uh, but I th I, what I really mean is a, a big game player. Yeah, De Bruyne is a good good player, is what I'm saying, in the big game. So, yeah, uh, this game against Spurs, I think he can do well. It's just a case of whether we want to transfer him out for a certain other player who might do a little bit better. The question is then... Do we bring De Bruyne back in for Aston Villa versus Arsenal? We'll cover that very shortly. Let's move on to Rashford for now. Uh, Crystal Palace and Leeds, both home fixtures. Uh, Rashford is like in the best form of any player in the Premier League. Right now, you would probably say, I'm not necessarily talking about FPL points specifically, but he's in phenomenal form. He really is at the top of his game. Two assists in his cameo appearance in the League Cup semi-finals uh, yesterday as well. So nice that he had reduced minutes in that game. Only played a few minutes at the end, and in that short period of time, he got two assists. So it shows how good he is right now. Uh, we've got two home fixes, like I say, against two weak teams. And what I love so much about Rashford in this game is that clean sheets are likely. So you're going to get points for clean sheets. We are going to get uh, extra points for for goals because he's a midfield and he is a player in such good form as well. And another thing is I feel like so many people are going to own him uh, this game week that maybe um, he's just like the most obvious captain of the whole game week. I know some people will be saying, oh, what about Bruno Fernandes? Bruno Fernandes isn't isn't as attacking as Rashford. Bruno Fernandes, he, you know, played 90 minutes in the cup yesterday. Um, Bruno Fernandes is, uh, you know, he plays slightly deeper. He's not in this amazing scintillating form that Rashford's in. Uh, his underlying numbers are nowhere near as good as Rashford. I mean, they, they're still very good, don't get me wrong, but they're not, you know, Rashford's level. So, yeah, Rashford is just like the guy this game. He's the guy. Like, I know most of you guys are going to have Rashford, but if you don't, Jeez, you need to get that sorted for this game week because I can really see Rashford, you know, scoring 20 points plus. Uh, like, I can see that happening quite easily this game week. I really can. I'm sure a lot of you guys kind of agree as well. All he needs to do is score one goal in each game, which is not that much of an ask. And we are looking at 20 points plus. You know, if he gets three attacking returns across this double game week, which is definitely possible, maybe even four then we're looking at a mega score. We really are. So this is looking very, very, very nice for Rashford. It really is. But anyway, let's move on to Martinelli. Still great underlying stats. Still not quite coming together for him. I, I feel like you can consider removing Martinelli, but for this double game week, uh, you know, the fact that he has a good fixture against Everton, then a double game week the following week. For me, I feel like I have to keep Martinelli. Because if I don't keep Martinelli, then I'm probably going to... That will probably mean I'll have to go into... Um, next game, we've only two Arsenal players, which is not what I want. I want to go with three Arsenal players. So I'm going to stick with Martinelli, uh, even if he gets me a four-pointer in the double game week. I guess the, I guess that could be worse. Um, but no, his numbers are really good. He's still making a lot of really, really progressive dribbles and getting chances inside the box. So is it a matter of time when the goals are going to come, when the assists are going to come? I think so. I think so. I think there's still a lot to be positive about Martinelli. And his numbers are certainly better than Almiron's. Almiron's numbers are, uh, you know, they really have dropped significantly there. They're like far worse than Martinelli. So Almiron at this point is just a sell. He is just a sell. It's unfortunate he had some amazing form before the World Cup. Uh, previously, I've said, you know, Almiron, he should be considered to be a player who you, you could kind of sell. You could keep him. You could sell him. I think at this point, it's just straight up. Yeah, it's time to go. There's so many other good options in midfield that it is just time to go Almiron. So I'm not going to waste your time by talking too much about him. He will be removed. His numbers are just so bad at the moment. Uh, you know, he's not getting anywhere near as, as many chances. He's not in that hot vein of form that he was in before. 
for. There's very little point in keeping uh, a player around like that when there are so many better options. Moving up front, guys, we have got Erling Haaland, uh, a player so good, he's going to score against anyone, including Spurs. You know, we really doubt, we really doubt that he's going to blank in any game week, really. Uh, so, yeah, Spurs away. The defence that, that Spurs have right now, you can really imagine that Haaland is, is just going to boss it. I can see it happening. Uh, Kane against Man City. Interesting one. Harry Kane, another player who has been in really, really good form. It's a difficult fixture on paper. But again, like we kind of said a couple of weeks ago, Kane and Spurs versus Man City is always a good one. Spurs, you know, they, they, they have a good record against City. They really do. City do not like playing against Tottenham Hotspur. And hopefully we can get a bit of a goal fest like we kind of did the last time these two teams played a couple of weeks ago. So if so, Harry Kane among the goals? I can see it happening. I think it could be pretty nice. And finally, we've got Tony up front here as well. Southampton at home, which is, um, which is something I actually want to talk about in a little bit more detail after I talk about my transfer. So we're going to leave Tony in there for now. Uh, I still think he's a good player to own. Is he a good player to take forward? I'm not sure. We're going to come back to Tony. So just hold that thought. On the bench, guys, Ward. We've gone for Ake on the bench. Uh, he obviously plays against Spurs away. Um, yeah, like I kind of said earlier, Dunk playing against Bournemouth is a very, very good fixture. I, I do think Spurs also will score against Man City. The bookies' odds have Dunk as, you know, like oh, Brighton, more favourable odds on guessing a clean sheet this week. So I think uh, I'm pretty happy to say if we're going for clean sheets alone, we're going to go for a Brighton defender over a Man City defender this week. Uh, both of these two players, by the way, scored in the cup this week. Crazy. But uh, let's see what they can do in the Premier League. But yes, we're going to go for Dunk over Ake. I think I would recommend doing that. We've got Bueno against Liverpool at home. You know, uh, even though Liverpool have been pretty bad, like and you're never fully convinced about a defender versus Liverpool, I guess. And we've got Andreas there on the bench as well. Uh, so guys, we need to make some transfers. And there's really one player that I think we're all talking about. Uh, if we don't have him already, we all, we're all talking about him. We all want to get him into our team. And that is Bruno Fernandes. And we've got to get him in somehow. And to me... The way to do that, particularly as someone with two free transfers, is to downgrade De Bruyne and uh, change him into Bruno Fernandes. And we can reverse that transfer the following game week as well. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's a pretty much nailed on transfer for me. I know everyone's talking about doing the exact same thing. I'm no different. De Bruyne to Fernandes and then most likely Fernandes back to De Bruyne the following game week. Play that upside. Play the two double game weeks that both of these players ha have. They've both got real big opportunities to haul. I think this is the way to do it as long as you don't have too many other problems in your team. And I would say that I have one other problem in my team and that is Almiron. I think Almiron out of the, all of the other players, I think... Some of them may not be perfect. You know, Martinelli is not the perfect player to own. Dunk is not the perfect player to own right now. Maybe Tony's not the perfect player to own right now. But they're still good enough. They're not like players you absolutely have to remove, are they? Uh, Albron, on the other hand, is a, one of those players you have to remove. But I have got two free transfers. So I can use my one transfer to do De Bruyne to Fernandes. And then the other one will be this. Almiron to Erdogan, and that would be my two transfers. We freed up a little bit of cash as well by downgrading De Bruyne to Fernandes, which does allow me to make the Almiron to Erdogan move, which is a move I actually wanted to make last week, but couldn't quite afford it. But we're going to do it now. Uh, this team is now looking very, very good. We're set up with the Triple Man United for this game week 22 double. We have now got double Arsenal ready for game week 22. And I think this looks good. Odegaard, you know, super cheap, high predicted points, good fixtures. This is really, really, really nice. Now there's one more problem I have in my mind of, I'm really not sure where I'm gonna go with this one. Uh, I haven't decided yet. This is pretty much locked in. These transfers you see on screen. The other transfer is a little bit more up in the air. And that is whether I'm going to transfer Tony to Inketia this game week or next game week. I can tell you now that I am definitely making that transfer by the game week 23 deadline. Tony plays against Arsenal away and there's ha then has a blank in game week 25. So he is going to be a player I have to remove. And Nketiah is just in such good form right now. He's doing so well. I genuinely believe he is the best Arsenal asset to own. And yet, I seem to be happy to go for Erdegaard, whereas Nketiah is even better. And I would prefer, to, if I had a straight choice, who am I going to go for, Erdegaard or Nketiah? then I'm going to go for Inketia every time. The difference is with my team, and it's going to be different for some of you guys, uh, but the, the thing is with my team is the upgrade of Almiron to Erdegaard is more significant than the upgrade of Tony 
to uh, Inketia, particularly as Tony plays against Southampton. And I need to make a decision. I'm going to make this Tony to Inketia transfer anyway. It's going to cost me a minus four no matter what because I'm going to have to do it next game week and I also have to reverse the Fernandes to uh, De Bruyne transfer. So I'm going to have to take a minus four either way to get Inketia into my team. Is it worth just doing it now? And some people will say, well, no, Tony is on penalties and he plays against Southampton at home. I've looked at the numbers um, both ways, really. Southampton, yes, they've played some easier fixtures, but they, they have significantly improved defensively on their in defensive numbers since the World Cup break. Their defensive numbers are they have shot up sort of into the top five, six teams in the Premier League. And I know a lot of that has got to do with the teams that they've played, but I still think it is noteworthy. Uh, the other thing is that Tony's numbers, particularly when you subtract the, uh, the penalties, but even if you don't, they are significantly worse than Nketiah's right now. Nketiah has some phenomenal numbers. I'm really, really impressed with Nketiah. And I feel like he should be, if not for the double game week, he would be transfer target number one. But because we've got that double game week, we do have to prioritise the, Man the Manchester United players. But when I've got the Manchester United players, I'm happy to get Erdegaard in for Almiron. I really want Nketiah into my team. I'm going to get him at some point anyway. Do I just take the hit, do it one week early? I'm going to take a hit either way. And the decision here really boils down to this. Who scores more points in game week 22? Tony against Southampton at home or Nketiah versus Everton away? That is the only question I need to answer. And right now, I am leaning towards Nketiah scoring more points. But it's a risk, right? So, look, undecided on that one currently leaning towards Tony to Nketiah for a minus four to take us to three transfers for the week, but I don't want to lock that in. Now, th with that said, there is something I'm more happy to lock in. Uh, that is going to be the triple captain chip. So I am going to be, I'm like 95% at this point playing the triple captain chip in game week 22. Feeling really, really confident about this one. Never say 100% because you never know, but um, yeah, I'm pretty confident we're going to be playing the triple captain chip and no surprise, that triple captain chip is going to be going on Marcus Rashford himself. Yes, uh, honestly, I, I think this is a no-brainer. I, I really do. I know a lot of people will say, okay, what about Erling Haaland next game week? But what we've got now is Rashford, um, a, a fully fit Rashford uh, who has just been rested in the cup games, uh, who is still in absolutely insane form no matter what competition he's playing in. He plays two home fixtures against two easy teams. Don't tell me they're not easy teams because they are. Uh, everything has fallen into place perfectly for Rashford at this moment. I think it is really, really good. I think it's, it's, it's a really good moment for Rashford right now. Everything has come together. Um, the other option really is to use the triple captain in game week 23 uh, because after that, I've kind of, all of my ch kind of chip strategies really are based around using other chips in the double game weeks, uh, most of the time at least. So I feel like game week 22 and 23 are the last opportunities for me and the kind of chip strategies that I want to use for me to use my triple captain. It's got to be 22 or 23. And I look up Erling Haaland next game week because he's the other guy, right? He's the other option. Haaland in 23. Could he score more points than Rashford? Absolutely, of course he could. But I look at these fixtures. They're against Arsenal, who are top of the Premier League. This is an away fixture, by the way. I think this is going to be low scoring. I think it will suit Arsenal for that game to be low scoring as well. Uh, so I, I think Haaland's opportunities in that game are going to be limited. We've already seen Erling Haaland blank in the FA Cup against a significantly weakened Arsenal team. So a full strength Arsenal team, you know... I'm just kind of trying to piece things together here. A full strength Arsenal team that actually the low score and the nil nil probably suits Arsenal to be fair in that game. Uh, but Arsenal will probably be pushing for a one nil win or something like that. Uh, or, you know, it's just not going to be a mega score, I don't think. Or you know, it certainly shouldn't be. Aston Villa, I think, are a team that are... It, it is a good fixture. I still think it is a good fixture. But this is a team that is rapidly improving. They've got the, technically the best uh, record in the whole Premier League since uh, since Unai Emery took over since the uh, kind of World Cup break. Aston Villa have kind of been secretly going under the radar as being a very, very good team recently. Um, but they're Aston Villa, aren't they? So yes, Erling Haaland always has a chance to score against these teams. Of course he does. But I feel more confident in Rashford. And that's why I'm going to triple captain Rashford in game week 22. We'll put the vice triple captain on Bruno Fernandes. Not that it means too much, but... I like this one a lot. I really do. I, 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 I'm feeling good about this one. Um, and when you feel good and when it feels right, you kind of have to do it in FPL. Um, 
the stats are looking good. You know, some predicted points, tools that I've been using are predicting Rashford to score higher this week than Haaland next week. It, 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 it makes perfect sense for me personally. So that's what we're going to be doing. Triple captain on Rashford. And that is going to be the team other than maybe Tony to Nketiah. That'd be the only difference that we might see before the deadline. Of course, we'll be doing a deadline stream and, uh, you know, maybe doing a little bit more discussion around that at that point. But there we go, guys. That is my Game Week 22 team. I, I, it looks good. This, this, is, this is 100 points plus. Trust me, 100 points plus. Here we go. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy this one, please do leave a like. Please do subscribe if you're new around here. We're going to do one more video tomorrow discussing the best uh, FPL players from Man United and Leeds because I know we haven't spoken about Leeds too much uh, so far in the build-up to Game Week 22. So we're going to talk about Manchester United players, the best ones to get, the worst ones to get, uh, and the same thing for Leeds. I'm going to do that video tomorrow. So make sure you've got notifications on for that one. But we're going to leave that one there. So thank you once again so much for watching, and I will see you later, mate. Bye-bye.